Hi and welcome back to Bill's Cichlid Room. Well, today I'm going to do a species profile on the Sinsphilic Fees Bow Corti, which is these guys just here. Before we get started, if you haven't already, can I please ask you to hit the subscribe button, it does help the channel out. And if you like the species profiles, I've actually got a playlist of quite a few of them on there now, so you can always go back and have a look at those. The Sinsphilic Feesbo Corti. I've got a group of four of them, which I've had for about nine months. They were about an inch and a half in size when I first got them, and I think the biggest one's about four and a half inches now, with the smaller ones coming up to four inches. Since Felic Fees, it comes from the Spanish for chisel and the Greek for fish, named in reference to the chisel-like teeth that define the genius. All the species have a small mouth and chisel-shaped teeth which are flattened. The adaptation of the teeth enables them to eat the fruits, seeds, plants and algae. The large cichlids which are found in rivers and pools around sunken branches and rocks on the Atlantic side of Belize, Guatemala and Mexico. The bow corti were described by Valens and Pellegrin in 1902 and named in honour of Marie Ferrin Beaucourt, who was the French zoologist who collected the fish in Guatemala. The bow corti has been moved around quite a few geniuses over the years. It was originally placed in Neotropolis because it was similar to the Carpenters which was also in the Neotropolis at the time. When the Carpenters was moved into Herictes in 1905, the Bow Corti moved along with it. Miller then moved it into Cichlozoma along with most of the Central American cichlids in 1966, but kept them in the section Herictes. He also moved the Pale Sai into this section, which is a very similar species. Many thanks to the people on the Facebook group American Cichlid Hobbyist for providing me with a few photographs, uh, namely Jake RKC, Petit Viz and of course Chris Biggs. Um, so I'll include a couple of photographs of the adults just so that we can see how similar in shape that these species are. Miller moved both the Bulcorti and the Pearl Sai into Vejar in 2005 probably because of the body shape and the black pattern that they get on the, on the sides. He did actually write a paper on why he did this, but the paper was never published. In 2010, MacMahon proposed Bocorti as part of the genius for apps, based on the nuclear DNA. As mentioned earlier, MacMahon and Pilner then created the genius since Fees in 2015, based on the shape of the teeth. Euphemani was moved into Sinsphilic Fees by Artes Agaz in 2020, making three species currently in the genius. Here's a photograph that I borrowed from the internet of the Euphemani, just so that you can see the similar body shapes. The bow corti has been classified as near threatened in the wild, uh, it's a herbivore species, uh, the water conditions that it lives in in the wild, it's got a pH of about 7.5 uh, and the temperature is probably between 76 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. They were introduced into the aquarium hobby in the late 1990s. Not much is known about how they breed in the wild, but in the aquarium an open spawner and they, they dig the pits uh, to actually put the wrigglers into. The juveniles are cared for by the pair and they're easy to feed with brine shrimp. Um, they, they are quite a shy species when young uh, so a good thing to do is to put them in like a well decorated aquarium. As you can see the way I'm keeping them uh, there's quite a few species in, in this aquarium uh, that, like the, all American species. They do have quite small mouths, so I've found keeping tetras with them no problems at all. Um, they're not showing any signs of aggression, um, so yeah, they, they seem to be a good community um, cichlid, um, like particularly at this size. Obviously, when they get to full size, so they, they get to about 14 inches, um, so yeah, when they get to full size, obviously the mouths are going to be a bit bigger then, so I may have problems, but yeah, at the moment, there's no problems at all. 
they do seem to be quite scarce in the wild and I've read the report how they actually catch them is they, they throw in half a coconut shell uh, into the water and then throw the net in after it and um, so what happens is that the coconut actually attracts them um, to the surface and so obviously because of the, the shape of the teeth they do eat, eat like fruit and nuts I've found that feeding them in the aquarium is no problem at all. The all the normal food, uh, the, the pellets, the flakes, frozen food, just about anything really. Yet, yeah, so it's it, I am really, really pleased with them, but with the way they're going. So as I say, I've had them for about nine months. They grew about three inches. Um, I believe they get sexually mature when they're about two years of age. So they're probably going to be about six, seven inches at that stage. Um, so yeah, they. they I, looking forward to, to the colours developing even more than they are now. So yeah, they, they get like a yellow golden colour, which seems to be one of my favourite colours of fish. <laughs> looking around the fish room, I've got quite a few yellow fish. Um, yeah, so they, they're doing really well. Um, so looking at them, sexing them is really, really difficult, obviously, uh, unless you vent them. Um, so the, the only real way of knowing it, it's the size of them uh, so obviously the males grow larger than the females so I think the males top out at about 14 inches with the females about 10 or 11 inches so if that's true it looks like I've got one big one and three smaller ones so hopefully I've, I'll have at least a pair of them but fingers crossed hopefully there'll be two pairs yeah, so as you can see here, the, the feeding's no problem at all with them. Um, so I'm actually feeding them. It, it, it's an, an algae-based uh, pellet, and um, because they, they are herbivores, so like it, it is good to actually get some uh, some of the greens in them. Yeah, so it's not a cichlid that you see every day uh, in in the shops, uh, but if you do come across them, they are well worth um, the, like giving them a go. And um, obviously, once they get to full size, the, the the size of the tank, the bigger the better, really. And um, so, you know, they recommend probably about a six foot tank. And um, the biggest tank I've got in the fish room is only four foot, so I'm, I might have problems uh, if I'm trying to keep a group of them. But hopefully, for just a pair, four foot would be fine. So once again, thanks to everyone that uh, provided the photographs for me to, to use in this video. Uh, and let's just have a sit back and, and watch them go about the daily routine. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video interesting and I'll see you all on the next one.